<laughs> Coffee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I think Austin was expecting me to say, hey, here comes your coffee. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, thank you. All right. Did I have to pay for this coffee? Not any, not at all, no. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Here we go. Uh, today is the much promised review of a whole bunch of yolks. Every time we did a review through a spa yolk review, the response was the same. But why didn't you do my expensive yolk? So now we're going to do all of them. All meaning the Logitech Honeycomb, Yoko, and Brunner. You're still Which laughing about the I noise, the the noise that that thing made when it hit your gut. <laughs> okay, so here's the question. Here's my first question. When we reviewed the Logitech Honeycomb, Yoko, and Brunner, before I go to the trouble to do this, what yoke is everyone going to say we forgot to do and cause us to have to do the whole thing over again? Oh, it's going to be the Brunner, like the, the, the oh, not there's light version. Oh, multiple different Brunners. Oh, God. So are we wasting our time doing this Brunner? Yes, of because course. We're going to complain that we didn't do the other Brunner. God, do you so even... The, so there's a Brunner above that one that has more force uh -huh. uh, on it. Okay. Um, <laughs> it may have a bigger yoke as well because that one's kind of small yeah it but, is it really is um, um anyway we have the ng version version november golf version all right we, have, a, we okay so you got the brunner the, november golf the kind of the which light is the lighter weight one okay fine all right so we'll just take that under advisement all right and if people ask for us to, to review the big brunner well too bad we're not doing it because this is the one brunner sent us Right? I mean, we're reviewing what they sent us. Right. They're like, we want you to review our product. That's my attempt at a German accent. We're like, okay, send us one. I think and they're from Switzerland. Oh, sorry. It sounded uh, German to me somehow. Sorry, I don't know how to do a Swiss accent. Okay, now Mike was asking why my shirt has changed. And the answer is, it's the next day. We're shooting a second time to do better the second time. Okay, so here we go. We are starting with the Logitech Flight Yoke System. Now, I'm going to avoid saying that the Logitech flight yoke system is good or bad. This is our baseline. This is what I'm used to, kind of. What you may be used to, it's very common. It's priced at only 180 bucks. There's a good chance you have it. This is our reference and everything else we're gonna look at, the expensive yokes are gonna compare to this. So we go to the joystick screen in X-Plane. And as you can see, we just move the thing and we'll set our pitch and roll. And then uh, of course, obviously in the joystick screen in X-Plane, we can go to throttle quadrant there, and then we can, uh, you know, move our uh, our throttle prop and mixture. And so what we have here is almost enough to fly an airplane. This review does not cover rudder pedals. The purpose of this review is to compare the Honeycomb, Yoko, and Bruner to the Logitech, which is our baseline. So this yoke is, I'm not gonna call it good or bad, I'm gonna say it, it's baseline or reference. Okay, so we're sitting here in the Cessna 172. I'm gonna hit the B key to turn off the brakes. Actually, before we fly it, let's go through the stats. Mike, first stat. Travel. Travel. Okay, so the travel fore and aft is a bit on the short side. Um, it's, it's like barely five inches if we're lucky. It's a short travel. This matters because when you're in cruise, the tiniest little deflection makes a big difference in altitude, right? Airplanes fly with the tiniest little difference in pitch causing significant you know, up and down uh, pitch attitude and therefore vertical speed. Or excuse me, the tiniest difference in yoke makes a significant difference in vertical speed at cruise. So you need a yoke that has extremely high resolution in pitch the only way you're gonna get that is if there's a long pitch travel on the yoke because that's the only way uh, a, a small percentage uh, can be achieved by visually moving the yoke. Um, so this thing has a pretty short travel. It's only about maybe four and a half or five inches. That is too short to give really good authority. So I'm gonna say that our baseline yoke just really doesn't have a whole lot of travel. Our baseline yoke also only goes to 45 degrees, which is uh, a little weak because you want to be able to go to 90 degrees, first of all, because the real airplane does, but there's a reason the real airplane goes to 90 degrees. It's so for a few degrees, 
uh, of motion that you can see, that's a tiny fraction of the total, which gives you the precision handling and roll. So the, the longitudinal travel is a little weak, and uh, the lateral travel is definitely half of what it should be as well. Next item, Mike? Resolution. Okay, so the resolution, this thing is very noisy. It moves uh, with a granular kind of noisy response of point triple o three, which is three tenths of one percent. Am I getting right? right? No, I'm not. Intermission on decimals, because this keeps confusing us. 0.01 is 1%. 0.001 is a tenth of a percent. 0.0001 is a hundredth of a percent. The noise and precision that we are seeing on these yokes is 0.0003, which is 3% of a percent, which is to say a pretty small amount of noise. Okay, back to the review, or does Mike have a question? Well, when you say you're, it's a noisy 0.003, does that mean it's jumping up and down yes. without you moving the yes. yoke? Yes, yes. If I say that there is noise in the yoke of 0003, that means that 3% of a percent of signal is flickering like this, even when I'm not touching the yoke at all which would result in 3% of a percent of your maximum yoke travel in causing the airplane to change pitch. It's a very, very small amount, and I can't necessarily say I notice it when I fly, but it is uh, an imperfection in the data that's coming into the simulator. Okay, so back to the hardware here. Uh, the noise and the precision are 0 0.003, which as we saw on the whiteboard is 3% of a percent. Uh, it's enough that the data output in X-Plane, which shows pitch heading and roll deflections, is constantly flickering by 3% of a percent. Maybe not enough to notice when you fly. I'll tell you what, I'll fly the airplane, I'll tell you if I think I can notice it. All right, after uh, the, the next item we want to check out, Mike, after resolution is? Look and feel. Look and feel. Okay, I'm going to call this baseline. It looks plasticky, but not super cheap plasticky. It's kind of an awkward shape, this kind of semi-hexagonal shape. The yoke, uh, it, it, uh, it's kind of this cheap kind of plasticky kind of feel, but still firm uh, enough. It doesn't weigh a dang thing, so it's always kind of flopping around on the desk. The attachment mechanism kind of tries to grab it with a little claw underneath the desk, but any sort of fle uh, flexibility anywhere at all causes the thing to be like this when you're using it, even though it's actually tight. The yoke kind of, there's a lot of play in the yoke where the yoke kind of moves around inside the case. So it's a lightweight case, not very well attached with a lot of play in the yoke, which is to say it feels kind of cheap and gamey. Uh, the hat switch feels fine, it's very precise, and the trim switches absolutely feel fine and they work. Um, now the hat switch, is it a clicky hat switch? Do you feel like clicks? Yes, it's a nice solid click. When you move it, it goes yeah, click. Because some of these hat switches moving. are not clicky. Yeah, this one does. It gives a nice firm click as it engages. I like it. And my thumb certainly fits on it very well. The resistance to moving the hat switch is low, so it definitely moves under your thumb quite easily. So um, basically, I guess this is kind of what we've been conditioned to expect. It's a little cheap and plasticky, but it certainly does work. Um, the Dynamic in, feel, how about okay, that? Okay, dynamic feel. So how does it feel when I move it? And the answer is the resistance comes up a little bit more. The farther I deflect it, that's good. The resistance might come up a little bit in roll as I move it, but really not much at all. It kind of goes boing, 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 you know, back to the center, which the real airplane, you know, I guess maybe it would kind of do at certain speeds, but um, the, the resistance is, it's probably about right, um, but it, it doesn't start with a low resistance in the center and then build up to more resistance the more you deflect. Real airplane controls definitely do that. This kind of lacks that. It always just springs and stops at the exact center. In other words, there's a significant force to deflect it, even a millionth of a percent, and that force doesn't increase even when you go up to 100%. The real airplane will require almost no force to deflect a tiny little bit, and the force will go up linearly so you deflect. You see, that's the dynamic feedback, or the dynamic feel. And so the dynamic feel is really, really not great. Again, kind of plasticky. It has this 
this uh, timer stopwatch thing here that some of the old timey airplanes used to have because this is the old timey way. Very you find limited approach. usage on that. Probably, yeah, you probably would never use it with modern instrumentation. Yeah, unless you're like trying to fly an instrument approach the way they did in the olden days, where they would like go to flying like a little fix and then start their stopwatch and then kind of fly outbound for a minute and thirty seconds and then turn around. And of course, plenty of people in the comments say, "The olden days. That's the way you do it today." Hey, it ain't the way I do it today. Oh no, it isn't. The way I do it today is I have a map, a backup map, and another backup map. And so I have real good situational awareness and I know everything that's going on. Use your hat switch look down, please. Okay, you got it. And show what happens when you fully deflect the yoke. Yeah, so the yoke of 45 degrees deflection here is 90 degrees deflection here. So just simply put, it's not accurate. It doesn't go far enough. And because of this gearing up, you, you don't really have uh, really good precision in close, although although it's not too Can bad. Can you see the noise by looking at the yoke? And when I look over here, oh, I, I see, see the noise. I see the noise. Yeah. Look, at oh. the, look at the yoke quivering. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see the, the yoke kind of quivering a little bit, so you can see the noise. So is the noise enough to notice? We had asked a little earlier. Here's your answer. Yes, and there it is. Visually, but Visually. maybe not flying the plane. Possibly. All right, we'll do flying last. What's the next item on the checklist for this yoke? Uh, size. Uh, the size is fine. It's, it, it feels like about the size of a real yoke, and uh, the, the thing that holds it is not too big or bulky. Next. Uh, that's that pretty it? much it, but okay, we, we got to mention the throttle since oh, it right. does come with one. Right. So what's nice is this system does come with the throttles. The throttles are extremely cheap, lightweight. They don't weigh anything. They have almost no resistance. They feel nothing like any sort of aviation hardware. but. But functionally, they they're fine. Yeah, they work. I mean, if, if someone was to bring this in to do flight training, like, fine. Let's you fly the airplane. No, it doesn't have the last bit of precision. No, it doesn't weigh anything. No, it doesn't have a, a real solid field. Yes, it kind of flops around a little bit, but you can still fly the dang airplane. And uh, you can absolutely demonstrate uh, flying uh, proficiency with this. So is it useful for training? Yes. Is it useful for flight simulation? Yes. It's just not super high quality. Okay, so the noise, uh, you know, I'm not exactly holding altitude, but uh, I'm not sure it's because of any noise in the yoke. I think it's just because I'm being too impatient with my trimming. So uh, the, 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 the bottom line is, the verdict on this, it's cheap, it's light, doesn't really, really weigh anything, it kind of vibrates around, it doesn't stay attached to the table well, but it works. So this is your baseline, the Logitech Flight Yoke System, perfectly functional. So let's now kick it up a notch. Let's hit the honeycomb. So the honeycomb is a good bit more expensive. We'll do prices at the end. Right now we're just looking at quality. And uh, just at first glance, the plastic has a much nicer feel to it. They've gone for this beautiful, beautiful matte finish where your hands go, but with this beautiful glossy finish where the uh, trim switches are and, and whatnot. Uh, the hat switch is clearly designed with more care. It's a much more high friction type of almost like a rubberized uh, plastic or a rubber type material. So very high friction, very easy to deflect. Is it clicky? It's a clicky, but it's such a light click that it's super easy to do. This is good, I think, in the sim, because we're only using it to look around, so we're not even really trying to simulate anything. Now, in let's not airplane. get out of order. We'll get to that in a minute. First okay. thing is travel. Oh, okay, fine. All right, so the travel is a little bit longer. Nah, maybe it's about the same. It's, uh, we're up probably a good solid five inches in uh, pitch which is, it's just a hair longer, I think, than the Logitech. Oh, let's go ahead and pan that. down. Let's go ahead and pan down so we can okay. see our- Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, okay. we already know it's gonna work perfectly because it's a 90 degree deflection here, you see? So we got a 90 degree deflection, which is great. That really gives you the precision close in. Um, now, when you sit there, do you see it quivering at all? No, there the is sound? zero noise, zero, not at none. I'm looking at the noise and there is zero noise on this stick. Yet, we can, when we move it, we can still move it. Uh, it looks like the resolution, if I'm correct, is 0007. That's what you so, had yesterday, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's, you could say it's lower resolution than the Logitech. It's 0007 instead of 0003, but here's the thing. It's no noise. <laughs> it's, it's a really good uh, 0007. And that's what, 7% of 1%? Of 1%. 7% of 1%. Yeah, that's such a small number. Yeah, so you're down to, you're down to a little less than a tenth of a percent um, in, in travel control. All right, what's the next item we cover? 
uh, resolution we just did, yep. uh, look and feel. Okay, let's do a little more look and feel. Uh, so the the mat the mat here is great. Um, the the glossy part that kind of sits under under your thumbs here and the and the switches is great. We've got master switches, avionics bus, uh, beacon, landing, taxi, nav, and strobe lights, all the kind of lights and power stuff you would use. And plenty of people say, well, there's a lot more buttons than that in the real airplane. That is true. This is not gonna address every air, uh, button in the airplane, but when I can go master battery, master alternator, avionics bus one, avionics bus two, beacon, landing, taxi, nav, and strobe light. I mean, that's that's kind of what I do when I start my it plane. It has almost everything on it that the Logitech switch panel, which is a separate item that costs oh. about a hundred bucks, oh, I see. has on it. And it's the, all built in. The only thing that the switch panel has from Logitech that that doesn't, that I can think of, is a uh, landing gear switch. Yeah, landing gear would be nice. Maybe that'll come later. Um, one little thing I want to point out, you got your key here for starting. The key is absolutely wired backwards right now in X-Plane 1140 Beta 4. Um, but since I know it's wired backwards, we will wire it up correctly before 1140 is final. So if you're looking at this review after 1140 is final, we really should have the key wired up in the correct direction uh, by then. Um, so uh, you've got your ignition key here with off, left, right, both, and start. Dynamic this, feel. Let me, let me, let me finish oh, one okay, more thing with going. look and feel. The, these, this awesome little elevator switch that's broken in half. You see there's two buttons? I've covered this in another video where I was saying, oh, they went to the trouble to, to give you two elevator trim switches. So you have to push them I both at once. I can see them in the plane right there. Zoom in, hit yeah. the plus key. Oh, okay. See if you can yeah, zoom there, in. there we go. You have to hit both of them at the same time to make the elevator trim. And Mike, you know why this is by now. Yeah, it's a safety mechanism. So if one shorts out, your elevator doesn't go all the way down or up. Right, you don't face plant the airplane. So um, an X-Plane didn't have the code to handle this. And I said I would honor their work with work of my own. And since then, I've done it. Here we go. We now have pitch trim A up and pitch trim B down, A down, and then pitch trim B up and pitch trim B down as assignable commands. And so now, if I move my pitch trim A, it doesn't move the trim wheel. Nothing if I move my tri pitch trim B, it doesn't move the trim wheel. I have to move them both at the same time to get the trim wheel to move. So I've, I have, since my last video on this device, I've updated the X-Plane code to use the, uh, the trim. Um, now, uh, the next thing you want to talk about is dynamic feel, right? Yes. So dynamic feel, as I pull it back, the farther I move it, the greater the resistance. The resistance is fairly small in close, and it increases the more it travels. That's good. That's in pitch. In roll, but in roll we don't not find quite that. as much. Yeah, in roll it kind of has the same resistance regardless it's of the deflection. Linear. Yeah, uh, or or static. It's really not even linear. It's constant. It's constant. like almost unchanging. There's barely any linear component. It's basically a constant resistance. This is not ideal. You would be better off with a uh, with a resistance that increases more the more you move the yoke. That said, it's still way better than the Logitech. It's um, it's got a, it doesn't flop around. It's a heavier unit. It attaches to the table uh, a lot better. Um, it it stays put a lot more. I can just feel the 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 steel uh bearings if you will on this uh metal uh push rod for the yoke and it's just got a much nicer smoother less plasticky high quality feel i strongly prefer it over the logitech due to it's just higher quality of construction and feel and uh much much tighter tolerances all right, the next item we wanted to cover after dynamic seal. Just overall size. Yeah, so overall size. Uh, the yoke, uh, it's about the same size as the Logitech, but it's a much higher quality feel, much uh, higher quality matte plastic. They really went to the trouble to get it just right. And um, the base. it's a little bit taller. Yeah. The base is a little bit taller, which might perhaps make it a little more awkward to work into some physical cockpits if you're building a physical 3D cockpit. Who cares? It's it, it's allowed to be taller. It's, it's only taller it. though, like an inch back. Like yeah, like after you right. get past the back, then it has that sort of dome, rounded sloping. dome kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So it's it's mostly taller right up here in the front, but that's where the buttons and switches are. So it, they get a pass for being a little bit bigger, bulkier package because they got more stuff yeah. in it. So um, so the size I would say is is very uh, convenient and appropriate. All right. What else we got? Lighting. 
This, like, so this is the unique aspect of this particular oh, one. Oh, well you can see sometimes when things don't work, you wonder if they're turned on or if they have power to them. And with a little button in the back here, you can adjust lighting. And so that solves the question of There's is There's like it about on? five levels of brightness. Yeah, and, so you hit the button, you can, you can adjust the brightness. Well. And then if you do feel like flying uh, in the sim uh, at night, and you turn this on, you might get a little bit of red ambient lighting in the general vicinity, which you absolutely do have in the real airplane. In the real airplane, it's a little red dome light overhead. Here, you get the same effect from this. So I don't know if it's really bright enough to use at night. It looks like it might be a little dim for that, but maybe if your eyes adjust. So, but mostly I'd say it's useful to see if it's, if it's plugged in to an outlet that's working. <laughs> so honeycomb, love it. Uh, after using the Logitech, the honeycomb is my favorite. But this race ain't over, is it? I guess the next thing we're doing is a Yoko. Now we're doing the Yoko. All right, so first things first, Mike, this does not come with the Yoko, right? No, this it's made different. by the same company, but oh. it does not come with it. It's the TQ6, oh. throttle quadrant six lever, TQ6. Okay. I feel like maybe we're being unfair in that the Logitech guys had the throttle technically included in their review, but we're not including the throttle in the review of the Yoko. Well, it's a separate yeah. product. Yeah. Just like okay. the Honeycomb is gonna have its throttle. Okay, all right. Um, all right, yeah. so we're, we're gonna stick to talking about the yokes, not the throttles here for this review. Because we're, we're, the question we're asking in this review is- And for is all I know, there's a Bruner throttle. I mean, I haven't looked into it. But, okay, something yeah. to check. Okay. But we had to mention the throttle with the Logitech because it comes with the package. Oh, it comes with the package. Well, there you go. Then it's totally fair that we mentioned the Logitech, but we're not gonna be using this one. Um, okay, so the Yoko. So let's, let me just, well, let's do, the, let's do them in order. The first one is travel, am I correct? Yes. Okay. The travel is, is, is huge. This is like probably every bit of eight inches or maybe even a little bit more. This is, uh, it's great. The huge travel is extremely good because then the quarter inch or half an inch or so that you might use in cruise is a small percentage of the total which lets you have that resolution in cruise. Um, laterally, oh, it's almost 90 degrees but not quite. They only take it about 75 or 80 degrees. Um, so the, and, and you can see that the, the motion inside the cockpit is just a little more than the motion here, which means you don't quite have the, the close in control and roll. No, it doesn't matter nearly as much as pitch, okay? You need the precision in pitch more than you need the precision in roll, because in pitch, the tiniest little bit of attitude change is gonna cause your vertical speed to change a lot. But roll, I mean, you're always gonna use some aileron to roll the airplane. You don't need that last 1% of 1% for roll like you do for pitch. Now, the resolution, uh, Mike, what, you, you have the resolution from when we looked off camera, right? What's the resolution? You had .003, but okay. you said it had a little bit of noise in it. Okay, that's 0003, I'm sure. Not 003, 0003. Yeah. Triple O three. Right, yes. three percent of a percent. So that's kind of like our, our our running average here is about what these things all run. And then the noise, I can tell you there is a little bit of noise. The aileron is uh, moving just a little bit. The elevator is kind of changing its mind a little bit about where it wants to be if I touch it. But uh, the well, we're not actually is able to see it like we could on the yeah, other. Yeah, that's interesting. Whatever the noise is, it's so low it doesn't even visibly move the yokes. That's great. But in what one of the other ones we looked at, you could actually see the yoke going back and forth a little bit. Right, that was a Logitech. So, um, so it's really long travel um, and the precision is, is very good. All right, what's the next item? Um, resolution we did, look mm. and feel. No. So talk about the, like the resistance first of oh, all. Oh, love the resistance. This is the best resistance I felt, definitely better uh, than any other yoke I've used in that there's not much resistance at all in close but then the farther you move it, the greater the resistance gets. This really is starting to feel like a real airplane. And it's also very little resistance in roll. Oh yeah, but the resistance really comes up the more you move the yoke. So in other words, you have very small resistance in close, very large resistance far out. And because everything is like metal and high quality, it doesn't really tend to bind very much. I mean, it binds just a little bit. It's like you can put it somewhere and it stays just a little bit, which is frankly not ideal, but um, you can certainly position it exactly where you want it, uh, even though there is maybe just a little too much friction. You see, you'll notice wherever I put it, it stays kind of, and that's, that's actually not ideal. You want to spring back to the same place every time, right? So the friction's a little higher than, than you might like, but it's still really good. Um, very high quality feel. It's heavy, it's solid, it's well attached to the table. There's no play. Uh, the hat switch is not great. 
Uh, they use this really slick plastic, so your thumb just slides right off it. <laughs> I'm a little surprised that they actually uh, shipped a hat well, the, switch that's almost unusable because your thumb just keeps sliding off of it because it's so slick. The first Yoko, <laughs> uh -huh. the Yoko first revision or whatever, uh -huh. 1.0, uh -huh. had no hat switch at all. Oh, so this is their first attempt. So this attempt is at it. Te technically their first attempt at right. one. So this mm -hmm. is, they call it the Yoko Plus. Now they right. also in, uh, made better sensors. I think they mm. went to Hall Effect maybe. Okay. I, I don't know, don't quote me on that. But they mm. made the sensors inside better mm. and they added the hat switch. Okay, with so the, now with what the they need to do, version. got it. And so now what they need to do is they need to get the hat switch up to the same quality as the honeycomb. Because right now, this ain't it. It sits up high, it's small, and it's super slick, so your thumb just slides off of it constantly. The trim is extremely dinky and plasticky. Uh, there's no AB trim that you have to hit both at the same time like there is with the honeycomb. Uh, the switch is sits up so high and it weighs so little that it feels you like it's going to break. You almost want to clip some of it off. It. Don't you want to just like clip a little bit of that that sticking up part off? I, no, because it doesn't have that full handle that your thumb sits on. You see, mm. with the honeycomb, you got that full handle that your thumb sits on. This yeah. doesn't have that. This is just a little gate that you push forwards or backwards. So if you clip it off, you won't be able to push it forwards or backwards with anything. You see? Otherwise, yeah, that would be a good idea. Um, so the trim doesn't feel right. The hat switch doesn't feel right. But the yoke overall uh, has a very, very, very nice feel to it. Um, what's the next one we want to do? Uh, dynamic feel? Yeah, the dynamic feel is good. The more you move it, the, the greater the resistance. Um, and uh, there's really no damping to speak of. Uh, or not very much damping, and that's fine. Too much damping really, in my opinion, just kind of gets in the way. Um, this feels a lot like the yoke in a real airplane. Springy with just the smallest amount of damping. It's a good solid airplane-like feel. It's really good. What else? So would you say it's the of the all of them the closest? Yeah, I think I like it just a little more than the honeycomb for the uh, for the feel, even if the switches are, are a pretty big fail. The yoke itself is uh, has a little nicer feel even than the honeycomb. Because it's just bigger and it moves farther and it's the, everything is metal. The box is metal, the yoke is metal, it's all metal, and you can tell. It's got a metal, heavy, solid feel to it. And this does feel more like a real airplane than the honeycomb does. Now I'm not saying I'd rather fly with this than the honeycomb, because the honeycomb has all the nice little buttons and hat switches and good trim switches and all that cool stuff. But if all I was gonna do was just fly and I didn't care about any of those buttons, then or I would maybe you have a paper. switch panel like you do over to the right. Yeah, and then you just add the switch panel and then you yeah, now you're cooking with gas, as they say. So uh, then you got the good feel of the yoke and the good switches. All right, uh, what's next? Size? Size, yeah. Okay, the yoke is not small, that's for sure. It's big enough, you have plenty of uh, leverage, plenty of action, plenty of precision. And then, this is kind of cool, the box that it comes in is simply metal and square. When you make it, unlike the honeycomb, which has like this big arcing shape and then this big kind of parallelogram in front trying to see how cool it can be, and it is cool, uh, this is just a plain old metal square, which makes it easier to integrate into an actual physical cockpit that you build. So this is definitely easier to integrate into a real cockpit. Um, and the next we fly with it, right? So, yeah, and I can say the cover is very easy to remove if you needed to um, get in there. You know, put some screws in through the bottom. You could drill the screws through from the inside. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's, the it's clamp nice is pretty accessible. good as well. It's an all metal clamp. The other, yeah. a lot of the other ones were plastic. I can't, well, I say that, just the Logitech I think was plastic. It feels great. It's just like flying a real plane. It's just uh, a great, great, great feel. So if someone's really trying to build a good cockpit, I'd say get a honeycomb or get a Yoko and realize you've got a little more professional and feel, uh, you know, professional heavy duty aviation feel on the yoke, but you're gonna have to come up with something else for all your buttons and stuff like that. And the Yoko just doesn't look as good as a honeycomb. Nothing looks as good as that honeycomb. Yeah, all but right. does the honeycomb look authentic? No, not at all. Right. Show so me an airplane that, that has, you know, all this matte, carefully tuned plastic. And a honeycomb and, shaped yeah, front with light yeah, coming right, out of yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's a flight sim unit. So while it looks cool, it doesn't look authentic. Correct. This is a little closer to an authentic uh, look to it, you might say, which is not necessarily a good thing because the honeycomb looks better than what you have in a lot of airplanes. But, um, okay, so let's see how we're doing with uh, altitude control, the all important altitude control. And the answer is the yoke moves little enough that I feel like any altitude control, well, there you go, and I'm at zero VSI, and we're climbing just a little bit, we're still accelerating. Um, the yoke gives me the ability to do precision pitch 
But if I really bring in some good force, I can pull some good solid G too. So uh, it really, to me, it feels like uh, it feels like a real airplane. This is my favorite feeling yoke, I would say, uh, of the batch. Um, all right, and let me land just because we're coming right at the airport. Let me land. So let's see if how I can maneuver this thing with this yoke. We'll pull up and dissipate a little speed. Bring it on. So around. we're in a one seventy two, right? Uh, yeah. Actually, we're not going to drop into flaps. I'm going to try and save everybody some time by coming in quicker. Okay. Right now, we'll bring in flaps. Now, I'll leave the flaps up until we get in close just to save everybody time. I just got my hand on the two key to bring the flaps in more close. Okay, drop some flaps in. You've done this before. Yeah. It's, uh, it feels like I'm landing a real Cessna 172 here. Get a little resistance there. Get the nose down. Little brakes. Yeah. Just like finding a real plane. So now for the controversial. <laughs> the controversial <yoke>. <laughs> one. The Brunner. I have no idea if I'm supposed to pronounce it Brunner or Bruner, but uh, I guess I'm just going to call it Brunner and because the in this number, country, two ends is Brunner. Number. Oh, gosh. It's on the you front of that me. book to the left. The front of the book to the left. This is the Brunner CLSE, which is the lightweight of the two Brunners. You so forgot it's two right? letters. NG, C-L-S-E-N-G. There is zero chance I'm going to remember so this. So the NG the part means the light version. It has uh -huh. less uh, forces and things okay. like that. Got it. Okay, so this yoke is a little bit different in that uh, when it sits here, it doesn't really seem to have any resistance at all. It's just kind of like... And now, between cuts there, we plugged it in. <laughs> okay, so when it plugs in, it's a little bit of a different beast. It, it, it does self-center itself. And what's really interesting is it's centering itself not because of some sort of spring. It's centering itself due to force feedback because we plugged it in. Now, it's way too over-damped, by the way. It's got way more damping than uh, the control in a real airplane. So it should be series. snappier is what you're saying. Yeah, it should be a snappier, but that's who cares? It doesn't matter. It's, it, it, it's, it feels kind of sort of like a real airplane, but there's just more damping. Certainly, I could see flying with it. All right, now here's where the Brunner gets a little bit annoying. Um, this is our second day of shooting this, by the way. And on the first day, like every other time we tried to launch this thing, we had to restart something because it didn't work. But uh, the first thing you do if you're going to use a Brunner is you have to find the, the, key uh, lime the, pie. the piece of key lime pie in your desktop. So here it is. There's an icon in the desktop that looks like a piece of key lime pie, and you double click on that. Now, when you double click on the key lime pie icon, this confusing little box comes up and you just have to hit the button called connect. And now, it, this is the part where we hold our breath and cross our fingers and it works half the time. Um, the elevator and aileron come up and go yellow and then green. Good. It worked. Good. Okay. And then above that, you have the profile that you're oh, right. using. Right now, our profile is Cessna 172 made by Stefan Brunner, obviously uh, a guy at the company, hopefully the founder of the company. And so you can choose all these different profiles to make the yoke feel like any airplane you want, including in this case, the Beach Baron, the Cirrus SF-50, the Mooney M20. And certainly as well, you can download more profiles off the internet. So in other words, you can get your profile really dialed in. Now, and you can create your own profile. Of course, yes. If you decide you don't own. want the engine vibration or whatever. Right. Yep. So you can you make can your take, own profiles. Yeah. So And that's um, in Profile Manager over on the right. If you Okay, just, I, I wanna I wanna go to this. I wanna go look at it. Profile manager. Okay, but here's the thing I wanna point out. The uh, the effects. Now I'm not zoomed in on this, so just keep that in mind. You'll have to just okay, I'll describe explain it. it. I'll just explain it. The effects have things like yoke is pulled forward by elevator weight, motor vibrations in percent, ground vibrations in percent, turbulence, min and maximum force, stick shaker enabled or not. And it's got all these things you can turn on or off, but here's the thing. You cannot really control what variables in X-Plane those things are connected to. If you say motor noise, well, it's whatever Stefan Brunner thinks motor noise is. And as we're gonna see shortly, 
it ain't what the motor noise really is. In other words, it appears to be configurable, but that's only because you it's like a, a menu of things at a buffet. You can choose things out of the buffet, and there's maybe a few dozen items you can choose. But X-Plane has tens of thousands of variables, and you cannot choose which variable you're actually accessing in X-Plane. And so it appears to be a large range of choices. It's actually a tiny range of choices. So throttle vibration should be assigned to what? Uh, there's, we have data refs for actual RPM. We have data refs for torque. And right, right, but you get to choose one. Which one would it be? Uh, oh, I would take, oh, I, I wouldn't use just one. I would take the engine RPM, multiply it by the current torque, divided by the maximum allowable torque of the engine. Then I would take a float abs of the torque so you get the negative, you know, engine braking torque as well. And, um, and when you do that, then you start to feel like a real engine. In other words, I would be grabbing a handful of data refs, putting them in an equation that's coupled to the actual torque and RPM output of the real engine. And then I would run the vibration basically on a sine wave with the propeller position so that the yoke vibrates as fast as the propeller turns. You see, there's really good ways to do this. And as we're going to see, it's not quite the way it's implemented here. But, but in your opinion, you feel like it's just hooked to one thing, like what was it, engine yeah. RPM maybe? It's connected, to it feels like it's connected to engine RPM times mixture. <laughs> In other words, so it goes to the engine RPM and then if you pull the mixture, then it turns off, even though the prop is still turning due to windmilling. You see, so you instantly yeah. see it's wrong. But anyway, let's, we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit. Let's, let's, let's review this with Okay, me. so step one, you open this software right. and you connect. Right, you find, the, and you you're, find you're, a piece of key lime pie and you hit connect. You, and you're connecting to the yoke, so you're connecting this piece of software to the yoke. Now, after that, you fire up X-Plane. Yes, you have to launch the, key, the piece of key lime pie every single time you fly X-Plane. Now we're going to resume last flight. Now we're going to let, let X-Plane load. After X-Plane loads, we're going to Alt-Tab back into Windows and then connect the yoke to X-Plane. So it's sort of like doing this uh, slightly annoying little yeah. square dance every now, single time you go flying. Before we do that, just check the plugins menu and see, but I don't think, see, I don't think the plugin is even working, you know, with well, the, uh, the yoke mouse. Isn't, that's for sure. So yeah. the yoke is not working, the hat switch right, is. Right, but go up to the plugins menu with the mouse. Uh-huh. And go over to their plugin. Uh huh. I, I'm sorry, I don't see their plugin. That's it right there. Oh, that's it. X Plane 10 connector. Yeah. I couldn't even tell that was a Brunner product. Okay. Yeah. All so right, it just shows it. it exists. Yeah. And so you have happens. to Alt Tab now. And okay. Go. So now we're gonna Alt Tab, and now we're gonna hit Connect. Right. Simulation Connect. Okay. Whoa. Oh, okay. So All of a sudden, moved. this thing this thing starts moving and, and vibrating a little bit. Okay. Oh. I'm not supposed, I think Don't I cl close it. You see, if you close this now, it'll shut everything down and you're, everything I just you're like you all over again. You're a fucking Crappintosh user. You just want to hit X on I know. Everything. I want to discard whatever I'm not looking at. Okay, now we're sitting in the airplane. The yoke is vibrating. Now I think, and it's all the way forward. And it's all the way forward because of the weight of the elevator. You see, the weight of the elevator is holding it down. So if I pull it back and I let go, it goes forward because the elevator falls. But as before it goes way too slow and with way too much damping. If you were to do this with the real yoke and a real airplane, like this, boing, 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 boing. You're right, that's what you do in the real airplane. You go thump, and it would just fall forwards. Here, everything has to be over damped, and so it moves slow forward slowly. It's just simply wrong. It's I wonder if they were scared of damaging it. Yeah, maybe he was. Maybe he was scared of damaging it. But um, like so many things we find with force feedback in this and other products, they're trying to emulate what's happening in the real airplane, but it's just kind of uh, a badly mimicked you know, attempt at it that has a synthetic feel um, because it's clearly moving way too slow. It doesn't really feel like it has the weight of an elevator that I'm holding up so much as it's just wants to run forward at a certain rate and then kind of stop when it gets to the end. So it's kind of a, a, a weak attempt at elevator weight. Uh, there's a vibration in the yoke. Now when I first feel this vibration, I'm like, oh yay, engine vibration, except for one problem. The vibration has nothing to do with the speed of the engine. Um, right now we are idling at 600 RPM. Well, anybody that's ever flown a Cessna 172 knows 600 RPM is it's, all, it's, it's, it's what, it's just 10 rotations per second. It's just kind of this, you know, it's just like this kind of slow kind of loping feel, but here it's like a bzzz, you know, like we're running a you know, wide open throttle or something. It's a much more high frequency buzz. And so this uh, vibration 
it's trying to feed back that the engine is running, but it's not really doing it. It's just like a buzzer that's always running. You see, it so needs it to be much lower feel, frequency. Yeah, yeah, the frequency here is way too high on the yoke, and so on. Um, so already, we haven't even moved the airplane yet, and already I can see why it's trying to simulate what a real airplane does, but it's not really doing it. The, the, the elevator weight feel is just kind of this slow forward slide other, instead of just falling forward. The vibration is just like a little buzzer hooked to the stick, not okay. the actual feedback of the prop. Now the next thing is, let's hit the F2 key and just run the throttle up. Sure. And okay. Tell us what the yeah. vibrations do, and we'll also okay. see what the, the, the yoke does. All right, does. so I'm going to add throttle, and the yoke comes back to center as the prop wash blows over the elevator. Okay, good. But what the, did the vibrations do? There's like, if there's any change at all, it's too small for me to feel it. There Feels may be a slight same. change in vibration, but it's, I mean, maybe it kind of went from an E to an E, but I mean, we've gone from 600 RPM to 2400 RPM which is, uh, you know, a whole different deal. We've gone from idle to full power, but there's almost no change at all in the vibration on the yoke. In other words, you can see what they're trying to do, but it's not really feeling like the real plane at all. It's like aping it. Um, now, uh, the good news is, this is almost certainly fixable with nothing but a software update, okay? This may will well be an incredible piece of hardware. They just need to feed in the right data refs you know, to really make it sing and dance according to the airplane it's flying. And if they contact me, of course, I can easily do that. I'll give them data refs all day long that they should use to, to hook this thing up to make it feel like a real airplane. So this thing may only be a software update away from making it jaw dropping, but I can tell you from my using it right now, it's more kind of uh, a little klutzy and artificial. Let's talk about what we've talked about with the other ones. Let's sure. Hit travel. Travel, okay. It's, uh, it's probably about the same as a honeycomb. It's a good solid five inches, no less. And it's, oh good, it's 90 degrees as well. So the, I'd say the travel's about the same as the honeycomb, which is to say, not bad. Let's talk about on- um, uh, Resolution. Oh, so, All right, okay. so resolution, what do you got on that? Okay, so the resolution is and noise. Um, down to point oh 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 two. Okay, so it's 2% of a percent. The other guys were like 3% of a percent or 7% of a percent. Seven, yeah. This is 2% of a percent. So this has higher resolution than the other ones, um, but uh, it has at odd times <laughs> uh, some noise or buzzing. Like for example, I have a buzzing right now because I'm carrying some throttle, but if I just back off the throttle like this, I just backed off the throttle with the F1 key, the vibration of the yoke completely went away. Even though the yoke, the RPM is still, you know, 1500, heck, I'll dive this airplane, we'll get the RPM up over red line, and there's zero vibration in the yoke, literally none. So, um... Because it's listening to where you have throttle, the throttle? Yeah, not where the, well, not what the propeller is actually doing, you see? So, um... So the, he's assuming the all the vibrations come from the engine itself and not from the prop. The prop, or yeah, or something like that. In other words, the the yoke now kind of feels a little dead. There's no vibration. Once you get used to that vibration, when it goes away, it, it just feels like something's wrong. So, um, and now that I'm adding the throttle, the the vibration is suddenly coming back, even though the prop is actually turning the whole time. So. Uh, and the engine, of course. Yeah, okay. So let, we can do a stall here, and as we slow down, the resistance on the yoke goes down, right? So as the speed comes down, the resistance on the yoke comes down. Ah, uh, now we're getting to the stall. So the only yoke with variable resistance. Uh-huh, yeah, that's what this is, because it's force feedback. Now, now, in the stall, the stall does not feel like the stall in a real airplane. It feels very synthetic. It feels more like a stick shaker. You see, with the stall, the yoke might be kind of randomly, kind of going boom, 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 you know, in this kind of purling noise, kind of, you know, large and, and small oscillations all overlaid on top of each other in this kind of pseudo-random kind of, you know, feel. But here, it's just a so it's, it, which is what you put in the stick shaker in airliners to make the stick shake when you get close to the stall as a warning. And so what is attempting to be a stall buffet really just kind of winds up as a, uh, a stick shaker type feel, which is completely synthetic. So um, 
Yet again, kind of the recurring theme with this runner, you can see what they're trying to do, but it's just not quite hooked up to the right variables to have the real dynamism that I think, I suspect this piece of hardware is actually capable of giving. So basically it's hardware that's capable of being Amazing, great. I think. It just maybe doesn't have the software where it needs to be to right. be great. Right, it's hooked up. And if the Brunner guys contact me, I mean, I answer all my emails, but if the Brunner guys contact me, then I will uh, work with them on coming up with some data refs to uh, really make it feel right. And we can oh. even reshoot this too. Yeah, and then we can also reshoot this video and hopefully they'll let us keep this yoke for a while so we can really try them out. Yeah, they said that and we can keep it for a little while. Great, okay, so we may we may help them make this yoke really good. Because right now I would characterize the yoke as being okay, but the force feedback is mostly just distracting. Now, sure enough, at high speeds, there is somewhat more resistance than there is at low speeds, so that's great. But does the higher resistance at high speeds really make for a better flight training experience? You know, I'm not so sure. It, it feels like the, the damping and the effects are really just getting in the way more than they're actually enhancing the flight. Now, one thing that's really awesome is when you run the trim, it actually moves the yoke. This does happen in the real airplane. And so this force feedback allows you to get that effect where as you move the trim and adjust the trim tab, the trim tab causes the, the elevator to rest in a different position. And this absolutely is fed back with yoke position. So that literally lets the trim be right on this, unlike all other you know, non-force feedback. If you were they using a honeycomb right now and doing that same action, would the yoke inside the plane move and on the screen? Uh, I don't know. We, I, we'd have to try. In the oh, real okay. airplane, it would. That's what I can promise It's you. moving now, but it yeah. may just be because yeah, the, the yoke plane, is moving. Right. Well, in X-plane, it's been a long-standing issue that as you move the trim, I move the elevator with the trim, but uh, the physical you know, spring-mounted yoke in your yeah. hand cannot move because there's no feedback to that. The force feedback solves that problem. So I would, I would say the Brunner for me is a little bit more of a distraction than a useful tool right now, but I think we may be kind of close to making it a useful One tool. One more thing worth mentioning mentioning if you were to fly with the autopilot if you can quickly do a quick autopilot uh, sure it'll actually the yoke will turn and move right. and so forth with that okay i think you could turn the autopilot on with one of the red buttons on the top right. well I'll, I'll just do trim and out so i can really select what i'm doing okay let's see uh let's put some juice it's in moving there. a little bit okay so a cool thing is uh yeah, you get some yoke motion with trim, which is most important, some yoke motion with autopilot, which is less important, but it's what the real airplane does. And then you were saying you can get two of these, yeah. they can hook up to each other, and whatever the pilot does, the co-pilot does the same thing because they're hooked up together. And that is another uh, And you great absolutely cannot do feature. that with the other And yokes. of course, that's impossible with any non-force feedback yoke. So I'd say the runner is interesting. It may be the beginning of uh, something, something uh, new to, to come that may become standard at some point. All right, I guess it's time for the overview then. Okay, now the whiteboard, the infamous whiteboard presentation. All right, uh, Mike's got all the numbers. Uh, green means me angry. No, this is red. red. Red means me angry, green means me happy, blue means, I don't know, it's just a thing. Okay, so let's go. Logitech, travel in both inches and degrees. Remember, the more inches of travel in pitch, the more precise your, your, your altitude control for cruise, mm -hmm. and the more uh, degrees of travel, the more precise your roll control. Mike, ready, travel in inches and degrees yeah. for the Logitech? Five inches of travel. <laughs> okay, five inches, uh-huh. <laughs> and 45 degrees. Uh, okay, I'm gonna write 45 degrees in red because I think it's annoying because the real yoke goes to... I agree, it'd be nice if it was 90. Yeah, 90 degrees. Okay, what about the honeycomb? Um, we got uh, five inches again mm -hmm. and we got 90 degrees. Ooh, I'm gonna write that in green. Okay, what about the Yoko? We've got about eight inches, or maybe even nine oh, inches to okay. travel. Okay. And um, we've got 45 degrees eh, of uh, eh. rotation. 45 degrees, okay. What about the Brunner? Um, we've got five inches of travel. These are estimates, by the way. Yeah. We didn't get our daggum slide rules out or whatever. Okay. I mean, these are estimates. Uh, but, and, the, and it was uh, 90 degrees. Oh, that's good. Okay, all right, so let's just go over this really so quickly. So half our yokes are 45 and half are 90. Yeah. Just right off, I see and, and nobody's given a really long travel of 90 degrees. There's not one yoke that really hits the travel 
that it hits all our traffic. Yeah, there's not like, one with a long yeah. elevator travel with a 90 degree rotation in right. this roundup. Yeah, there's not. not that doesn't mean one. there isn't one that is out isn't out there now. No, there's not one that we looked at. Not one we looked uh, at. This this one is the best feel for me as far as I'm concerned. Um, and remember, you need it in pitch, not so much in roll. Okay, let's talk about uh, look and feel. Logitech, I'm going to say, eh. You know, that's our baseline. It's okay. Right. It's, the plastic is kind of shiny, and it's like they kind of randomly pick materials, and it's okay. The, the I stopwatch think it's more makes of a no meh. sense. M-E-H. M-E-H. Uh, yeah. I was yeah. like, eh. I was supposed to say, meh. Meh. Okay, the honeycomb. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the best looking. Yeah. Well, close to absolutely. Bruner looks pretty good, too. Uh, um, the Bruner doesn't look nearly as good, I don't think. The, the honeycomb, it's got all the little landing lights and right. the alternator and the generator and the little key. All the plastic is carefully, you know, careful look and feel. It's great. Uh, the Yoko doesn't have any of that cool stuff. It's industrial but, looking. Yeah, but it's so metal. I'm gonna say okay. In other words, it's metal, it's solid, but it doesn't have any of the extra cool stuff yeah. on it. You see, and the and the switches, the trim switches, feel like they're gonna fall right off. Which is in, in, in some cases, yeah. some the people might like. The thumb some... slides right yeah. off of the the hat switch. I'll say it's okay. And then the Brunner, um, I'm gonna I like say, the look of the Brunner. Yeah, it's industrial. It doesn't. It feels like you could have, you know, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm going to change my mind here a little. I'm going to say, not bad, but I'm not going to make the Brunner be blue if the Yoko is green, because I just don't think that's fair to Brunner. I think we're going to put this guy in blue. I'm yeah, I'd say, agree with that, yeah. I'm going to say, not bad. Uh, so the Yoko, it has no frills, it's just industrial. The Brunner, not much in the way of frills and kind of industrial. The yoke is plastic. The the, the case is metal, the, uh, it's a, the, the, the hat switch, you move it you know, all over with your thumb uh, with the long travel, which doesn't to me feel precise. And what's but. interesting on the Brunner is it doesn't have a domed hat switch, it has a little like a, a, a cove or yeah, something. Yeah, where your thumb sits in it to move it around. It which works. I'm not saying is, a, is bad, it's yeah. just different. It's, it's good control. There's much better control of the Brunner switch than there is the Yoko without question. Um, I'm going to say, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to be, I'm going to say not bad at all. At How about all. that? So in other words, we're making the Brunner a little better than the Yoko. Because the Brunner does have okay. some switches on there that really work that the Yoko simply lacks. I'm going to say not bad at all on the Brunner. How about that? Uh, honeycomb is just the coolest one to look at with the, the coolest switches and stuff. Yeah, okay, I think I think it's a fair, a fair yeah. evaluation. All right, what about dynamic feel? How it feels? Logitech. Uh, let's just say, oh. um, kind of, kind of grainy. Is that a fair word? Grainy. grainy. It's got a hard detent too. Yeah. Uh, uh, bumpy. Just barely serviceable. Is that, should that be in red? Detenty. Well, I, 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 I tend to want to make it blue cause it's sort of like our baseline. Okay. Is, you know, and then we're going to go up or down from there. The honeycomb. Oh, nice. It's, it's got a very nice feel. It's, it's, so you love that. Right. The dynamic feel, it's, it's uh, good resistance, uh, good travel, high But it precision. does not increase right. uh, as you deflect That's it more. That's right. As you deflect it more, the, re the resistance doesn't really increase very much. At least so not, on the, not on the uh, roll axis. Right. Okay. I'll say nice, but a little synthetic. synthetic. How about that? Uh, the Yoko, oh yeah, abs fave. The Yoko is just a, a great, great dynamic feel to it. The Brunner, okay, so the Brunner is an interesting one. The Brunner goes beyond all the others and then it has the force feedback. It gets low resistance at low speed and more resistance at high speed. It falls forward when the throttle isn't you know, running at all and then the thing centers as the, the throttle puts prop wash over the elevator. It does all this cool stuff, but that doesn't make it feel more like the real airplane because every effect is so obviously synthetic and the vibration has no connection to the actual propeller you know in the actual airplane the stall is exactly the same every time it's just a bunch of like tricks that are put on that doesn't really make it feel to me anyway to be really like better for flight training 
You know what I mean? It's, mm. it's sort of like buying, I don't know, it's like buying a Toyota Camry, then recording the sound of a Ferrari and playing the Ferrari sound in your Toyota Camry while you're driving. It's like that. So it's mm. cool, but I don't feel like it helps me to fly the sim better. Mm. The thing that I fly the sim best with is the Yoko. Okay. So, but, but it's not fair to not give the runner credit for what it does do, which is run the resistance up as the speed comes up, because that's very much a part of flying. And as you slow down, the control gets sloppy. That's a part of flying that you know the other guys don't get. So I guess yeah, I'm you have say, the exact same resistance no matter what speed you're flying on all the other yokes. Right. Can I say interesting potential? It has potential, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, or potential. Uh, Maybe if you and Mr. Bruner get yeah. together. I'll put that in green. And then if you do, we'll do a re-review. Re uh, synthetic. Oh, speaking of which, the Impossible Burger. Fake meat. I love it. It's good for the I, environment I it and it's a good burger. It tasted pretty good. I couldn't yeah. tell the difference. Yeah, the Impossible Burger. It's great. If, if you haven't tried the Impossible Burger, you should do it. It's uh, better for the environment. It's still a good burger. Okay, price. Um, let's uh, talk about price. I have well, no idea what first, any of these let's things Let's write cost. down the number. Uh, so it's 179 Okay. with a throttle. You got almost have a little star there for with throttle. Okay, 179 I'll put a little star by it to make and it. And that means it comes with a throttle. With the throttle. Okay, what about the honeycomb? The honeycomb's two fifty. Uh, I don't know what color to use. Um, uh, I, I think that's still blue or green. I mean, okay. that's still. I mean, it's better. It costs. I would say. But I could not fly with the Logitech after flying with these other yokes. So I'm putting a big green happy explosion around it. Could you because stomach the Logitech after using all these others? I mean, no. I mean, it's just impossible to even. All right, so what I'm going to put a bunch of green happy faces around it because it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot better. So to be clear, so, a lot of people are using Logitech right now that's probably the biggest one on the market and if you're watching this video if you buy any of these other three no matter which of the three you buy you're gonna like it a whole lot better all right this is a guy shooting sticking himself his in the head tongue out. no uh. this is a guy sticking his tongue <laughs> going, Bleh. all right so i have to draw the prices in blue because 250 is more than 179 and i consider both of those prices to be moderate but I'm happy to pay the 250 for the honeycomb. I'm not happy to pay the 179 for the Logitech. How about yeah. that? Okay, what about the Yoko? What's that running? That's right at the thousand. Okay, out comes the red. Boom, a thousand. Okay, it's a lot, but as we've seen, when, if I have to pick one yoke just to fly the airplane with everything else aside, I'm frankly going for the Yoko. Okay, what's the right, runner? Right, so it just it depends on your budget. If yeah. you know, a thousand dollars to you isn't the it's same as a thousand dollars to me. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Bruner is comes in at around thirteen hundred. This is their okay. sort of value uh, proposition okay. on their uh, force feedback stuff. All right. There are higher models which I haven't taken a look at. This is the one they sent us, so this is the one we're evaluating. Okay. Got uh, it. My understanding is the other ones have higher forces. Okay. Now, we wanted the size of the yoke because you want the size of the yoke to match the real airplane. The thing is, all these yokes are about the same size. The Brunner is a little smaller. I'm going to say that, that every one of them has a good size, except the Brunner feels a little small. That's what I'm going to say. One thing but I will say is, is the Honeycomb is sim somewhat tall to integrate into a cockpit, but the back oh, part, right. once you go past that back part, it does get a little narrower. Yeah, so we'll say medium, small. Uh, they're all medium. The Brunner's medium size for the yoke. Uh, okay, the, the... The Yoko has a shockingly small box that it uh -huh. comes out of it. it. It's actually pretty darn small. Fine, we have to do the yoke and the box, okay? Because so that's clearly is, an issue here. The biggest box... Size is going to be yoke slash box. Okay, so, the so biggest let's start box, with the Logitech. The biggest box is going to, or the Logitech, it's, it's like medium. Yeah, if that's a medium. 
The honeycomb is large. It's a big Wait, old box. Are we box talking about the? the uh, no, 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 no. The oh, the honeycomb. Yes, yeah, the I'm honeycomb. Sorry. Yeah, yep. yeah, large. The Yoko. You it's actually on small, the small side. The little box. And the Brunner is going to be medium. How about that? Yeah, it's narrow but kind of deep. So I guess what we're really saying is the honeycomb is the, the box back there that holds the yoke is kind of big and bulky. You're not going to be able to integrate it necessarily into just any virtual cockpit. And you wouldn't even want to with all the buttons and switch. Well, I guess you could. But um, there are people out there though that are doing it already. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they are. Making uh, panels for that. The the Brunner uh, you know, is another medium size, but the Yoko is small. The Yoko's gonna be easy to really build right into uh, your physical 3D cockpit because it's a small metal case. Boy, you build that in a 3D cockpit, it's boom, it's in there. Have to unplug and plug back in is going to be <laughs> no, 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 yes. Have to uh, connect annoyingly per flight. No, 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 yes. Uh, the 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 uh, Brunner, we have to to run that little separate app get it to connect, hope it does, turn it off, turn it on again. So we had to do, what, like two out of three times, I think. I think so. Or yeah. two out of four times. So like half the time we had to do that. And um, and so the Brunner just requires, yeah, you launch the app, then you launch X-Plane, then you go back to the Brunner app, then you connect it to X-Plane, then you go back to X-Plane. And that's if it all works the first time. All right, that's not even getting into the fact that it doesn't work and you have to redo the whole thing. So this is like, it's like exactly that everything. I just don't feel like I have time for it. But uh, nevertheless, uh, is it worth it for the force feedback? And I think to plenty of people, they'll say, yeah, it is worth it for the force feedback because now and the it's customization. got resistance like a real plane. So you yeah. could go in, you could turn off the vibration for the engine. You yeah. can increase or decrease the damping. You but can, you can't um, seem to select the data ref that it applies to. You so can you're have still it, not really dialing it I understand. Properly. Okay. Uh, but you can also, we saw in there where you could have it make a vibration when you land the plane. Probably yeah. when you run off the runway into the grass, it could vibrate. You know, so while the this extra piece of software can be an annoyance it can also be something that what allows all these other extra yeah. things to occur right so it's it, yeah i mean but as you mentioned the data refs aren't necessarily perfect right. or accurate right like it's tying the vibrations so I wonder why to they couldn't have written their thing as a plug-in for explain though so you don't have to fire it well it does have a plug-in the plug yeah. So when you hit that, but why connect, not make the whole UI in the plugins? The whole UI is in X Plane. It's uh, not done in a separate app on the desktop. My guess is that app probably works with all the flight simulators. Yeah, it also works with Microsoft and who knows probably, what else. Probably, yeah. I Got could it. be wrong okay. about that. No, that makes sense. Um, okay, all right. So, so basically, this I'm gonna get out of the way so everybody can see all the text. Am I still on screen at all, or am I off screen? Yeah, oh, you're on screen. Okay. Totally. So, Mike, what? Which one do you like the most? Which one do you want to use? Hmm. What's your preference? Just not the Logitech. I mean, yeah. the the other three all it, they have something going they have, for them. They have their merits. They have their merits. Um, I'll tell you, if if I could only use only use one yoke just for flying the plane, it'd where be the all Yoko. my buttons and switches are handled elsewhere, oh. it'd be the Yoko. But if I don't get my other buttons and switches in some other way. Uh, I, I feel like, I think for me, that's my choice. Well, it especially doesn't feel quite as good as the Yoko, but for having the hat switches and the trims and, and you know, flipping on the buttons yeah. and the lights and starting the engine, I'm willing to take all that even if it's only, you know, like a 9 out of 10 instead well, of a 10 this. out of 10 on the field, you see? Um, and also, if it breaks down the road, you're not throwing away a thousand dollar unit or a thirteen hundred dollar unit when it's out of warranty. Holy cow, that's right. When it's I out of warranty. Right, right. It has a these have a long warranty, and I don't know those off the top of my head. But yeah. um, or let's say you want a simulator at your beach house or your summer house, your mountain house, and right. your regular house. None of which I actually have, by the way, yeah, yeah. to be clear. But okay, go on. You know, again, you're you're spending you could buy four honeycombs for the price of one Yoko. Right. But if you got to have the very best feel and the mm. feel is everything, then you want the Yoko. Yeah. And if you're a guy that wants the cool factor and the 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 way the Bruner changes depending on your speed right. and what you're actually doing, the right. feel never changes on the other yokes. That's right. Then you like the Bruner. So the I think the and bottom the line is an interesting potential if they get those data yeah. reps hooked up just right. So I just think 
all of the the other three other than the logitechs all are wins they just win yeah. in a different way now there is unfortunately one choice if we didn't review and that's a, that's the uh the extreme 3d pro the little one that just sits in your hand that you just wiggle around well see that's just the if, Logitech, if, if you don't pro really if you're just like testing and yeah. you don't and you don't really care like you that's what you use you sit at your desk and you just go, okay, I'm gonna take off real quick and do a quick test of something. Yeah. You're not flying for pleasure, you're flying right. for, I'm gonna make the sim better. That's and true. And I need something that I can just throw it, sling it out of my way, because it costs $20. Right, fascinating. I will point out though, that a lot of airplanes, including mine, are flown with a stick, not a yoke. True, yeah, Everything well, all the new, the new, like the Cirrus and the Evolution, and all those newer planes. Yeah, they all, they're sticks. all done with sticks, not yokes. So um, but all everyone, but most of the people that, a lot of the people that like to use X-Plane are learning and you always learn on a yoke almost all the time. Yeah, and an interesting thing about the Cirrus, even though it looks like a stick, it actually is kind of a little bit like a yoke because it translates fore and aft this way to raise That's and lower true. the nose. Yes. But then it, it rotates like this. So it's like a stick and roll. It really is like a yoke. yoke. Well, but it, but it rotates like this. It but doesn't that's what rotate a yoke like does. this. A yoke rotates like this about the but center. But it's still a shaft rotating. Right. Yeah, yeah, but on the on the Cirrus, the, the 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 stick sits right on this, so it's this type of rotation. You see, because rotation would. Right I would under still your argue hand. it's it's rotating a shaft just like yeah. a yoke does. Yeah, you're tr you're right. You're right. It's a lot. It's a shaft rotating. Yeah, it may be the, the Cirrus may actually be more like a yoke, even though it looks like a stick. It's like so. a it's it's like a yoke. That instead of having the two things on either side, just it just has one, one sticking up in the middle. It's pretty close to true. Pretty close to true. Okay. Um, so what do we buy? I don't know. Each person should buy what you want based on based on what you see here. Uh, the the final little wild card is the twenty dollar uh, Logitech that I use when I write X Plane because I need something quick that takes up no footprint on my desk because I've always got manuals and stuff all open at the same time I'm working and I can just toss the little Logitech off to the side. But if you want to simulate uh, an airplane with the yoke that you're willing to install in a cockpit, I, uh, I think I would like to, I think the okay. honeycomb is, is giving the good value. And in the comments, make sure you tell us how we got this completely wrong. We don't know what we're talking about. Right. We're crazy. You've used yeah. this and it's better right. and blah, blah, blah. Well, hopefully we haven't exactly tried to claim anything's better. Hopefully we've done a fair yeah. job of showing the pros and cons and let each person No, there's not any one that I would go, everybody buy this. Right. Because it yeah. depends on what you're Pen doing. On your mission. And your budget and yep. yeah, your mission. All right. Sounds good. I will need coffee. Oh no, I dropped my pen. <laughs> okay.